Now for a further look back at the markets in 2009 and just how we're placed heading into 2010, let's go now to our Melbourne studio where we're joined live by Rod North from Bourse Communications. Hi there Rod, thanks for your time. How are you going Nina? Oh, very well thank you and let's kick it all off by taking a look back at the year that was really dreadful start to the year wasn't it? Markets reaching that low point in March. Since then though it's been up and up, the market has fared really well. How would you describe the market's movements this year? A pretty outstanding recovery. I mean, to think that we got down to 3,109 back in March and have recovered 55% and looked awfully likely uh, that we might get to a 5,000 index before the end of the calendar year. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get quite there. But to get uh, a 55% recovery is pretty outstanding, I've got to say. And um, I suppose if you look back in history, we probably haven't seen a recovery in markets to that sort of degree. But it does show you that markets can turn around. And in history, uh, they always have and, and always will so people should not never abandon investment opportunities uh, you know back when the market's at its lowest point because that often appears to be the best time to make the gains. Yeah loads of lessons to be learned from 2009 no doubt about it. Now we are close to the 5,000 point mark on the ASX. How soon do you think until we reach it? Oh, look, I think realistically we're probably going to see that uh, sometime in the new year, but not likely perhaps until we start to see the reporting season occur. I think what often happens with share markets is they can get a bit ahead of themselves, and I think uh, we'll probably find that people will be looking for the reporting season, which will be companies reporting to the 31st of December, just to see how they've gone. Now, if those companies are able to have maintained or improved their earnings, you know, that will mean that the share market will continue to rise. So that's something to sort of keep an eye on. We saw a few stocks that started to show some indications of that and I think a very good one was that uh, Qantas uh, a week ago put out a, a profit um, forecast that their profit would be somewhere between 50 to 100 million which uh, pretty much indicates that uh, their share price is likely to go up um, you know, in, in the new year. So yes, I think we'll see that 5,000 but probably not until maybe sometime in February. And what about looking beyond that too? Because of course the previous market hype 6,800, we last saw that back in November 2007. Gosh, how so much has happened since then. Can you realistically see us getting back to that mark any time soon? That's a very interesting question. I did a lot of analysis of that when I wrote my book actually and what it shows is that generally the market high of 6,800 which was achieved in November 2007 is likely to get back to that peak in about 33 months. So we're still a fair way from that and I think realistically the market moving up by nearly 55% in 12 months. We, we, I don't think we're going to see that same pace occur because we've got issues that we need to look at like what what the uh, GDP figure for December, the December quarter is going to be. Is that going to be a small positive or could that be a negative? I don't think that necessarily in terms of the recovery process that we're in that the economic indicators yet are perhaps going to enable that market to get back to that level very quickly. I think you know you could say that 6,800, that previous high, is probably still a good year and a half to two years away. We could probably say there could be some chance it could be achieved in 2011 or 2012, Nina. Rod, uh, let's talk about investor sentiment. Everyone pretty much agrees that a lot of risk appetite is coming back into the market now. It does seem that, or do you believe it seems that investors, that, that air of caution is, is starting to be whittled away again very quickly in fact and this real overwhelming confidence and optimism seems to be flooding back into the market perhaps a lot quicker than you and others would have expected. Yes, I would agree with that because there's a, definitely a psyche because we sort of we've moved out of the fear cycle and what we're now starting to see, and particularly with the September uh, figures that came through for people's superannuation returns, uh, you know, people are pretty delighted that a lot of the gains that were lost on paper uh, have worked their way back. And I think when we see the December uh, year-end figures come through too for people that have invested in super, they'll probably be just as delighted. And it's always interesting that good news like that always encourages more people back into the market. Market. Perhaps in some ways that even in late 2007 when our index was heading you know, very close to 7,000 people were choosing that time to invest. So it doesn't always necessarily mean it's the best time to invest. It, it, people's op optimism you know, often sort of gets ahead of itself. Yeah, that's a good point. Now they've described 2009 as being the year of the recovery. What are the major stocks and, se stocks and sectors that stand out to you as being a really big part of that recovery phase that we've seen this year? 
Absolutely. When you look at its few stocks, it's very interesting even when you look at the, uh, the top 200. It's really banks, banks, banks and banks. The banks have been outstanding. Uh, each one of the banks has recovered over 100% and we've seen uh, BHP uh, and also Rio recover. So, you know, generally it's been the top you know, top really 10 stocks that have really probably taken most of that gain of the 52%. I think if you analyse it, you know, the rest of the uh, top 200 really perhaps don't even make up uh, much of that percentage. It's really largely been, you know, the biggest stocks that have driven, you know, the market recovery that we've seen so far. And that's not that unusual because generally when, you know, value is perceived to get a bit ahead of itself there, uh, you find investors then start to look at other sectors of the market and also start to look at the, uh, the smaller cap end of the market, which has been pretty flat this year, I've got to say. So what you're saying is that really that the smaller mid caps, uh, when you put them all together, they really had very little bearing on uh, how the overall uh, ASX performed. And it was really, in the end, uh, put down to how a handful of the big stocks did. Absolutely. And, and I mean, that's, uh, you know, in essence, really what's happened. And I suppose even when you look at the banks, uh, the banks have been in, in a unique position that they have a very significant uh, part to play and they've had the deposit guarantee in place. You know, you, we've seen a situation where the non-bank institutions basically disappeared a year and a half to two years ago. So their market share in the mortgage market's now gone close to 90%. So they're in a very good position to be able to benefit, uh, if you're a shareholder in, in a bank, uh, with earnings that are going to continue to improve and of course we didn't see the massive write-offs uh, that uh, everyone forecast would occur you know post sort of uh, 2007 2008 that whole sort of contagion effect didn't occur so that set the banks up for some really spectacular gains which we've seen I do think they'll probably slow down a little bit uh, over the next six to eight months though we hear a lot about the so-called investment clock of course it's used to determine mar market cycles so what time do you reckon it is now well, it's interesting, uh, Nina. I think we've moved towards uh, between 7 and, and 8, which very much indicates that we've got a rising share market. So there's still particularly good value for people to invest in the share market. Uh, but we're also seeing interest rates rising now. Um, the downward cycle, as we know, finished when the first uh, interest rate move upwards occurred in October. And we've seen three 25 basis points rise since then, taking the uh, cash rate to 3.75. And obviously, uh, there's significant expectation into 2010 that that cash rate's probably going to nestle itself somewhere between four and a half to five and a half percent. So there's a few more interest rate rises there which will have some impact on uh, investor sentiment I would have thought. Uh, Ron of course it's been a long time since March when we saw those lows but you did just mention there that um, you can still see some value in the market. Whereabouts are you seeing that? Well, I think, as I was just saying a, a bit uh, earlier, it's largely in the secondary stocks and also at the small cap end of the market where you've got emerging companies that are doing things that are of great interest. And I think also we've seen quite spectacularly the whole mining and resource sector, which largely a year ago was a basket case, um, turn around dramatically. And I think we're going to see um, some significant moves there. And I would expect what often happens in this uh, stage of the cycle too, and I'd expect this to occur over the next three to six months is we'll start to see a rash of takeovers occur right across the board. So that's actually going to boost the market quite considerably because a number of those major companies are going to be looking at opportunities to grow uh, strategically and will make uh, bids for companies that, of course, if you're a shareholder in any of those companies, you're going to benefit uh, very significantly from that. So that's sort of what will happen in, in this next sort of stage of the recovery cycle that we're in at the moment. And I do believe we're actually at, a, the, at the beginning of a new cyclical bull market Market, which of course uh, you know will take time to, to uh, play out and that's often a sort of three to five year cycle. Yeah it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Rob we're going to have to leave it there but I'm wondering if 2009 was the year of the recovery perhaps 2010 might be the year of consolidation and M&A's perhaps. I think that's exactly right and, and that would probably make sense too for it to, to be exactly like that Nina. All right Rod North we're going to have to leave it there. Really appreciate your time and happy new year to you. And Happy New Year to you. Many happy returns. <laughs> Rod North there. Well, after the break.